Gute and welcome to this technical walkthrough called Raspi First Steps. This video is part of my video series Raspi from A to M. And for this video I assume you already have watched my previous videos and have installed Raspi. If this is not the case, I will put a link to all information and videos I've made on that topic in the description box below. Gute. Hacky Tacky Nerd Stuff Open Voice Enthusiast Open Voice Open Future Let's start by taking a look to a terminal and when you start Raspi there's just one command line argument required. This is a profile which is basically a language code such as EN for English or DE for Deutsch for German to tell Raspi which language configuration you would like this instance to be started in. So if I run Raspi without any command line argument, as I've said, minus minus profile or minus P is a required command line argument. Let's run it in EN in English. Once Raspi is up, now let's switch to our browser and open HTTP localhost on port 12101, which is the Raspi web port. Now it's time to give a short overview of this simple web UI, starting in the left upper corner with that Raven Raspi logo, which always brings you back to this main page. Followed by the version number 2511. If you click on that, you get a Swagger-based API documentation, which shows you all HTTP GET and POST API possibilities of Raspi. And this is super helpful when you would like to integrate Raspi by using that APIs in your existing ecosystem. So let's check out one of these API endpoints. You can see there are no parameters required for this special endpoint and you can try it out. So click this one, execute, and you see an example curl request which has been triggered to, the, to that API endpoint and you can see that JSON text formatted body as a response. So this is really super helpful if you would like to work with Raspi's API. But let's go back to the Raspi web front end and we see this type of navigation here in the upper side, home sentences, slots, words, settings, advanced and documentation, which relates to the left side navigation. So if I choose sentences on the top menu, you see it is automatically switching on the left navigation side and vice versa. So if I choose slots, you can see in the upper menu, it's changing to slots. The only option that is missing in the left navigation part is that advanced settings, but this is not really important on your first steps. Then we have that log information or log window showing all event logs from Raspi. And on the upper right side, we see that profile name that Raspi instance is running in English configuration. We have a train button because if you change or adjust sentences or the pronunciation of words, Raspi has to retrain to know how to deal with that changes you, you made. But in general, if you make any changes that require retraining, then Raspi will bring up a notification pop up telling you that you should retrain. Then you can restart the Raspi process and you can on this icon on the right side, you can restart or shut down the system. But this does not just relate to Raspi. If you restart the system and you're running on a Raspberry Pi, for example, or any other operating system, the operating system is restarting or shutting down. Let's go to this black backgrounded bar. This is showing each type of service that Raspi's voice assistant toolbox can handle. For each of these types of services, there are multiple software solutions available that can provide this type of service. But let's start from uh, left to right. So we have an MQTT, which is important because Raspi is communicating using MQTT and it's bringing with its own MQTT broker. But if you already use MQTT based components, you probably already have an MQTT broker running. So you can easily switch to your existing MQTT broker in the configuration if you would like to do. Then we have a microphone, which is probably not the worst idea for a voice assistant or a voice assistant toolbox. Then we have this wake service category that is probably most known for Alexa or Hey Google or Hey Microsoft. So this is the wake word or hot word it's called sometimes too. 
Then we have the speech to text. This is normally the next step after being activated by the wake or hot word is speech recognition. So transcribing the spoken user request into written text for further processing. Then we have this intent recognition, which is basically to figure out what the user meant by its request. For example, if I'm going to say just temperature, this is hard to figure out what's meant. What's the temperature outside? What's the temperature in the living room? Or if a smart home software like Home Assistant might be connected, it could be set the temperature in the living room. So intent recognition's job is to figure out what the user meant by its spoken request. Then we have text to speech or TTS. So the opposite to speech to text, create a human natural sounding artificial voice from textual input. Then we have sounds. By default, Raspi brings in three BP sounds for the wake word has been detected and recording session. Speech to text is going to start. Speech to text is finished or in case of an error. You can change these sounds to individual sounds or <laughs> Star Trek like sounds, whatever you would like to have it. And we have intent handling. This is not the same as the intent recognition because once Raspi knows what the user request is about, we need this magical box for doing the actual stuff. Sometimes it's called a skill in other voice assistants. Any kind of business logic dealing with the actual stuff to do. And last but not least, we have a dialogue, which brings in all the other components into one session to make it a fully felt voice assistant from the automatical wake word detection to speech to text intent recognition, intent handling, text to speech, and this all together into one session. As you can see, this bar with all the service types is completely with a black background. This is showing that none of these services is active at the moment. Let's check the next row below, starting with wake up. So I can activate Raspi without saying a wake or hot word by clicking this button, but this required to be speech to text and intent systems to be configured and enabled. When I woke up Raspi and speech my request, I can play back whatever request I've spoken. Or on the right side, if I do not have configured my audio setup yet or no microphone available, I can upload a WAV file with a spoken user request as a saved WAV audio file. Recognize is a test of intent recognition and intent handling. And this is just available if I enable any intent system. So it's grayed out at the moment, the same for speak. To give this one a short try, let's click here, jumping to the configuration settings, intent recognition, and choose the recommended option. Raspi is showing, we can save and restart, not the host system, but restart of the Raspi services is required. So let's click this one, setting save, restart, yes. As you can see, this really went super fast. So I did not speed up this process. This was real time, super fast restarting the Raspi services. Let's get back to the main page. And now you can see it's not grayed out anymore. I can play around with that intent parsing. And as you can see, this button has a green background and I can see which service is working for intent parsing. To get an idea on what we can do with this intent parsing, let's go to our sentences tab in the navigation. And we can see here, name of any intent in these brackets, like get time, get temperature, get garage, state, and phrases that will be mapped to this intent, asking what time is it, should trigger the intent get time. So let's give this one a try. So no intent recognized because I did not train Raspi yet. So let's click on train. Again, real time, super fast. And let's try it again. What time is it? And we can see now it found and mapped to the intent name get time. This is a very static example. So what time is it? Or tell me the time. Let's take a look to the intent get temperature. And here we can see that there is another notation. So 
how hot is it will trigger that intent and how cold is it will trigger this intent. So let's give this one a try too. Let's go with cold. And here we are, so get temperature is the mapped intent. And to give you one last example, let's check this change light state. Might be a typical use case if you would like to control your smart home software like Home Assistant or Open Hub or I.O. Broker uh, with Raspi. So, and we can see that there is a definition of light names like living room lamp or garage light um, with that attribute name, name. <laughs> or we have a light state, which is on or off. And this is mapped to some sort of attribute called state. And we have a phrase like turn the, might be optional, light name listed here and light state listed here. So this should work when we ask Raspi to turn the living room lamp on. So let's give this one a, a try. By the way, I can really recommend you to take a look to Raspi's documentation because it's really well written, easy to understand. So please check out Raspi's documentation. Take the optional parameter in the living room lamp on. This might be a typical request to a smart speaker for a smart home. So let's recognize and the intent found is change light state and we have these two attributes name and state. So let's take a look to the JSON. We can see that this is the JSON output with all the information taken from that user request and intent parsing. Let's go one step further and take it to intent handling because once the intent has been recognized this JSON has to be pushed to a magical box skill handling intent handling stuff that does then the actual magic for example if we would change it here to home assistant this JSON we have seen will be posted to home assistant and home assistant or its components has to work out on what to do switch it on and can configure my home assistant connection but that might be a topic of another video so let's go back with disabled here let's check the options on the on the navigation so on the left side or on the top menu whatever you prefer you already have taken a look to the sentences so there is a sentence any file by default or we can create a new sentence file the next navigation point is slots and as you can see there are two slots defined already raspberry days or raspberry month and a slot is to reuse some words in your sentences and in your intent handling or in your intent parsing because let's say we have days slot with a wednesday wednesday might be used in multiple intents such as what's the weather like on wednesday or set an alarm for wednesday morning wednesday or all the other uh, days of a week can be used in multiple sentences in multiple intents and to reduce the number of copy and paste and paste and paste, Raspi offers these slots so you can define the list of days, month, movies as it's written in its documentation and reuse these slots in your sentences, in your intent parsing, which keeps intent handling nice and clean. The next point is we have words. And if you are familiar with artificial voice generation, so text to speech, TTS, sometimes TTS systems, they pronounce words really weird. So here we can help to improve the way Raspi pronounces words. So we can write the written version such as test and uh, phonetic pronunciation. As always, I can really recommend taking a look to Raspi's documentation. Then we have the settings tab and this will be focus probably of next video where we'll take a look to each of these service types and all the available software stacks that are supported by this service type. Scrolling a little bit down, we can see the mentioned sounds. So we have a wake sound effect, a recording sound effect and the narrow sound effect. Before showing you some configuration stuff on the command line, if you like that type of videos, please consider unsubscribing to my channel as this would really help me and the channel a lot. Give this video a like, share it, 
thank you all for being part of my wonderful open voice technology YouTube community and for watching my videos. Let's switch once again back to our command line window, stop the Raspberry process and let's take a look to Raspberry's configuration. Raspberry's configuration management consists of two parts. One is the default system-wide configuration that can be overwritten by your local in your user home directory saved configuration. So let's start with your user individual configuration. This is located in your home directory config Raspberry profiles and then we can see this en directory so the language code or the profile that this Raspberry instance has been started. And if we would have made any adjustments, for example, in the sentence any, this version of sentence any would be located in my personal user home directory. Now let's take a look to the original or system-wide base configuration. This is located under user lib raspy raspy minus profile, recipe profile, profiles, really intuitive name. And here we can see lots of directories with language codes for multiple languages with translated content. So for example, let's take a look to the German version. And here we can see in the DE, in the Deutsch, in the German version, a sentence in E. So let's take a look to this. And we can see the same intent names such as get time, but now in German phrases. Wie spät ist es? Sag mir die Uhrzeit. If I would run Raspi in the DE configuration profile, these sentences will be printed by default. So let's give this one a, a last try. So let's go back to my user profile config. Raspberry profiles. At the moment there's just this en directory. Now let's start Raspi with the profile de for Deutsch. Go back to our browser, refresh. At the moment there is this en in the upper right corner, so let's refresh the page. And now we can see I've run this uh, Raspberry instance in German, so de. Let's take a look to the sentences. And here we are, the intent name but the German version of the phrases that will trigger the get time event. Now let's add another one. Die aktuelle Zeit, bitte. So let's save the sentences. Sentences saved. Notification pop up to, re to retrain Raspi. Okay. Process finished. And now let's go back to the terminal. Let's stop Raspi. And now if things go right, let's list the directory. We should have a DE directory too. And here we are. So now not just the English version, instead we have the German version. Let's switch into that. And as I've promised, or at least mentioned, there is this sentences any. And that's been my technical walkthrough on Raspi's first steps. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If it is so, please give this video a thumb up, share it and please consider on subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching my videos. Have a nice rest of the day and if you like, we might see us next time. Bye!